what I discovered is this model is accounting for spires, but it is not truly wound according to the nature of a quantized three-dimensional torus. So if we have a torus in 3D where we have all of our axes going, we have unbroken multiplication series, um, no, matter how, no matter what group of nine we're using, we could be using a sheet of nine by nine. And I'm going to show this graphically. We could be using 18 by 18, 27 by 27, 36 by 36. Any group of nine, I am saying, which was not known until now, that you can make a torus based on any group of nine. And I have the algorithm for how it works. But what I found is that it's not all one circuit. Though these spires do work to interconnect the various circuits and they do polarize the fields. These relationships of the parallel lines of the triangulation and also even mostly importantly here if you can see again I'll follow it, the diamond those overlappings of the, the hexagons, the diamonds, you can see the pentagon in here all those overlapping geometries are highly significant within the torus but they are not showing the path of these doubling circuits in a true 3D so I figured out how to calculate them perfectly in a 3D and what I found is it's not just two conductors even on the smallest possible torus you can make which is a 9 by 9 it is a minimum of six conductors why does that why is that so and what am I talking about so I'm saying when this mathematical fingerprint used to be shown the idea was that or if you look at a torus, let me show you an example. This may be a little confusing to look at, but if you can follow me on the colors here, I'll show you how the idea was, because this was actually an illustration that I did to show how it doesn't work. Um, Let's, this is the way that the coil was said to be wound. And this is not an accurate, perfect torus. It's just one I had to fill in. Um, I, so I would be having a wire coming in here. It would skip four, one, two, three, four. It would come out here. See, that's my next pink. This one was pink. Coming in here on pink. One, two, three, four. This is my next pink. Then I'm going to switch to yellow. It would come around yellow, yellow. Then I would switch to, I believe, green, green, green. And it's going to go orange, orange, orange. And then I'm back to pink. And it cycles again, saying that this was all one interconnected circuit. But I found that it's not. It's actually multiple circuits. And it depends on how many groups of nine you have. So if I was just to account for nine on my horizontal axis, nine numbers on my vertical axis, which means I can connect them in a circle, which is the principle I have to maintain. I have to have a perfect circle on my axis that is one of my multiplication series. And it also has to intersect perfectly with a horizontal axis that's accounting for the right um, opposing multiplication series for that axis. In this case, it's my one and eights and my four and fives. My two and sevens are my z-axis. Um, as I make more layers of the skin, th that will switch. This could be two and seven and one and eight. Okay. Um, or actually it'd be eight and one. But I won't go into that yet. So if you're looking at it on a flat piece of paper, you would say, oh, well, all these green are just one circuit. Um, but they're not. Even on a nine by nine, so I have nine on my horizontal, nine, nine on my vertical, nine on my horizontal. And I will have uh, also the negative numbers filling in between, which I believe is a total of 162 numbers for a nine by nine. I'm going to uh, show you what that will look like. Let me, let me just pull that out. 
So this would be an example, and I'm going to explain to you what this is. This is very small, I know, but this would be a 9 by 9 torus. All right. It's composed of three what I call nested vortices circuits. What is a nested vortice circuit? We know these vortices over the surface are nested vortices. Um, they are like kickers for the electricity. They impart more atheron energy, the electricity accelerates. There are um, more axes for the electricity to compress and decompress off of, or for any motion to work off of. Now these nested vortices have to function with each other in a sequence, um, which is over the surface of this whole thing, which is, which is probably the most significant and complex aspect of vortex-based mathematics. I believe it's also the secret to the periodic table, which I'm beginning to model. All right. Um, so I'm saying that with a 9x9 nine nine torus, it's a minimum of three nested vortice circuits. So in other words, if it takes uh, a whole group of these to represent a nested vortice circuit, so this these three right here would be one nested vortice circuit. Okay, this would be two, then three. Okay, for a nine by nine torus, there's three different nested vortice circuits. They make a total of 18 vortices. This is the most simple that you can do. Uh, they're in three groups of six, so there's six of these. And you can assign a number to each of those vortices. So you can see these smaller diamonds in here are where I was putting my initial numbers, even though they're not written in here. These bigger numbers now that are written on are a number that goes for each nested vortice. But these sequences cannot occur if you only have two conductors. It's impossible and it doesn't, doesn't correlate with this torus. So one or the other has to be correct. This torus is showing that instead of the windings going round and round and round, as I showed in my other video, and you can see this on the more advanced video, that this one's coming in here, it's coming out over here and connecting back to itself. So these are multiple circuits. Each one of these colors represents four different conductors, four different wires, which means in this model I have 12 wires. Um, those various circuits create the phenomena which is being talked about here. Called spires. When you're going in this path or here like this, every time you cross back at a right angle, that's a spire. Um, so you're getting these polarized fields and you're getting these parallel lines which we also saw in our initial symbol. We wanted to have those parallel lines. We wanted to have the triangulation. We wanted to have the essentially the hexagonal shape, this being a 24-sided polygon in the center. If you, this is just a 24-sided, you know, based on a hexagon. Um, so you have all your different geometries accounted for. So, so this would seem to be correct. But what's actually happening, these spires are what we're talking about when we talk about these spirals over top. Here's my initial doubling circuits going in. Over top of that, I have these spirals, like this red one you see coming all the way over. And when you look at those spirals, it's kind of interesting because they look and they follow the metric of the spirals we see in nature and shells and the Fibonacci uh, generally in vortex motion. So you can tell right away that there's something highly significant. I actually found the secret of the, of the spires and how they work. They increase in a certain uh, amount depending on how many circuits, how many conductors you're using.